My name's Chris. And I'm Christy. This is the Washing Up Podcast, and it's holiday week. Happy holidays. Holiday. Oh, please don't write into the, um, do, 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 do. To the podcast saying we're killing Christmas. Yeah, because no. It's holiday week, not celebrate Christmas. Christmas week. So this week we've decided we're going to have a special guest. Um, mm. And unlike normal, they're actually here. Leah. Hello. So. Woo. So this week we've decided to, to three three person booth this. Yes. Because mm. it's holiday week and it kind of needs it. I mean, there's gingerbread. Mm. Yep. We're even uh, broadcasting from downtown Sydney. I mean, miscellaneous city. Downtown miscellaneous city. In the gorgeous Cleary Studios. In- she is not here. <laughs> Sponsored by Flowers and Falls. <laughs> <laughs> Check them out on Facebook. Yes, yeah, broadcasting outside, outside of the new, outside of the usual, as you can hear from the lovely wildlife we have going behind us. Yeah, we usually have cats and dogs. Uh, in the background today, we have a budgie. I can't remember its name. It doesn't have a name. It's just bird. It's just bird. bird. We, we've heard the word, and bird apparently is <laughs> indeed the word. the word. So, as opposed to Greece, which is also sometimes the word. the word. So, anyway, back to holiday week. And this was always going to be a tough one because you've got a lot of very skilled bakers left, and there's, there's uh-huh. no weak spot. No. No. There's no room for error. And I think it was good in terms of how the producers chose the bakes for this week um, because there's uh, three different types of skill – and also a bake that's probably going to be unfamiliar to the. Well, probably to was it? Probably was it? Wasn't even an understatement. Look, like, there, was, <laughs> there was a lot of shixes in there, you know. We'll come to that. We'll come okay, to the shixes um, later on. You want? You want to get there? I know you want to get there. You're, you're desperate to get there. Shixes and Michiganers. We'll get to. We'll get that to that a little bit later, though. So we begin mm-hmm. with the um, Yule log. Um, now, I need to go back, and we, we need to talk about the fact that they they got. Everyone was trying to work out how to say it, <laughs> which was great because Sabrina was the only one who vaguely had a clue. Mm. So she was teaching Dan and Vandana how to say it, taught us all to say it. I, however, don't actually understand how to say it properly. Bouche de Noël. Bouche de Noël, I think is that, that's the best we're going with. Yeah. I, think I, I, I learned French for 10 years. Well done. I wrote so. it. I actually tried to write all this stuff phonetically as I went. And I'm like, how is bouche spelled? Because bouche is also mouth in French. Mm. Yeah, see, when... So when, that when, was some of my thought process. I would have liked episode. one that was like avant-garde and big, and it could have been mighty bouche de Noël. <laughs> <laughs> see, whereas originally I went... Oh, it could have been a sculpture of Noel Fielding. <laughs> <laughs> mighty bouche do <de> Noel. <laughs> <laughs> That's spectacular. See, with me, when I went bouche, my head goes la bouche, and suddenly I start seeing 90s <laughs> electronic <laughs> dance pop <laughs> hits. <laughs> So anyway, so the LaBouche, the oh, mighty Noel yeah. LaBouche, um, whoever, um, this was, it was quite an interesting one. Whenever I watch any of them make a roll, whether it be a Swiss roll or whatever, there are a couple of things you look for. Cracked sponge. Yeah. What sort of sponge they make. Mm. The ratio of sponge to filling, which everybody pretty much got wrong. Yeah. Like it was. Except Vendana. Yeah, except Vendana. Uh, everybody else pretty much got that wrong. Mm. But let's start with the most important thing, the sponge. So mm. everybody decides to go uniform across the board. And then there's James. <laughs> Jacond. James, seriously, as the Brit, you've seen British Bake Off. Leave Jacond alone. Jacond ends badly. We saw it take Pierre out. <laughs> yeah. Pierre took Pierre yeah. out. <laughs> Don't blame Jacond. I saw the first half of the episode twice, so I was watching with Gabby, and when we heard Jacond sponge, we're like, oh no, it's a terrible idea, James. <laughs> Again, there are those moments in Bake Off where you hear something and go, oh, oh no. Why are you making this more difficult? Why are you making this, you know, <laughs> signature even more difficult than what's being set for you? And what got better with, with James's was that James decides he's doing a jacond. Mm-hmm. So he makes the jacond and then it, Terry looks up from her bench at one point and looks at him and, and goes, what, what are you doing there? And he's like, I'm making it again. I thought it was really good the first time, so I'm making it again. Why? Well, somebody forgot to put butter in. <laughs> Just his little ode to Jude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm missing Jude. I know what I do. I'll have to get to put butter in this one. <laughs> so I don't know how you think to put butter in the sponge. I mean, it's a pretty 
obvious element to forget. I mean, Matt Moran would have killed him. He would have killed him. <laughs> but what I loved was <laughs> when better. when they came over and they're talking about doing a jaconde, James goes, it's going to be perfection. He couldn't finish the sentence before he burst into hysterics. <laughs> <laughs> so he had no confidence in his own jaconde. <laughs> but on the plus side, he James worked. got a lot better later on. So yes. he got a lot better. Terry. Now... Now, Terry opens up by telling us that she's going to have candy canes in her filling. I've got no problem with that. No, no. And then she followed that up by talking about the fact that, you know what, I didn't realise that I, I, I have a lot of smashing in my baking. <laughs> <laughs> it's stress baking. You know how people do stress baking? This is a perfect yes. recipe for it, just smashing down those candy canes. Oh. <laughs> It was. It's only three months till Christmas. As months. you pointed, as as you pointed out though, Christy as well. Um, one of the things with Terry, and she's had a, had a last couple of weeks, she's had a few slight issues, and obviously this week was kind of the week where it caught up to her. Mm. It's almost Terry is baking with her children in mind. It is now. I'm sure Bob and Bindi. I mean, <laughs> her two children, her, her girls, two, her girls are Great. bandits for for a bit of sugar and some you know sweetness. So I think that's, like, overwhelming the flavour profile. Yeah. But also I was just interested, like, because she told Dan that, oh, it's going to be chocolate and peppermint. So I was like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Classic combination. Then it was white chocolate. I was like, huh. <laughs> yeah, well, well I, I don't think, I mean, Terry said at the end, why did you cover it with so much white chocolate, Terry? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Did, did Terry, I have to know, did you get an answer from yourself? <laughs> when you asked the question about why did I do that, did you answer the question? Because... Yeah. It seemed weird. Mm-hmm. I feel her, though, because if I was doing it, I'd be like, this needs more chocolate. Look, I've got a whole heap of chocolate there. I may as well just put it on because more chocolate can't hurt. <laughs> <laughs> no, never. It can. No, more, more chocolate More chocolate doesn't really ever cause a problem. Um, no. Linda, on the other hand, went more pumpkin. So when they, they... pumpkin. My whole family loves pumpkin. And it's like, oh, it's so cute. <laughs> I love they have pumpkin everything. They have pumpkin bread. They have pumpkin this. They have pumpkin that. I'm like... So it's, I like the idea that Linda's family don't actually like pumpkin. I it's like just it. that she keeps making it. <laughs> it's the only way she can make it their vegetables. It's enough, pumpkin. Linda. It's good. What a, they're writing diaries. Day 476. <laughs> More pumpkin. fudging pumpkin. Oh my God. It would be fudging because it, it's Linda. Because it's Linda, yeah. yeah. And they're all so nice. It's like, do you like it? And the kids are like, yes, Nan, we love it so much. Nah. Uh, look, 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 Nan is making her making her pumpkin. What pumpkin what? Doesn't matter, just nod. So that, you like that? I like pumpkin. It's like you eat it now and then you get rewarded with a gingerbread house. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we had... To counter all of this, um, we had Sabrina, who, when in doubt, went back to a Bake Off classic. <laughs> Booze. Yes. Yeah. Egg Eggnog. Oh, brilliant idea. And, yes, I, I really felt with Julia. See, I'm remembering names. Look at you. Oof. Um, Julia, like, being all of us when we first chased Eggnog and went outside, it's, it's just yum. You guys have a different opinion? No. I'm impartial to the eggnog. I don't really have a... Uh, I don't I, have a say on it. I haven't actually had eggnog. The idea of drinking something that is raw egg just puts me off. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm happy with the rum. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just happy with the rum. rum I mean, I don't, I, don't, I don't feel the need to, to, to dilute the rum <laughs> with <laughs> anything else. Just, just the rum. That'll be I fine. I mean, I have a voracious sweet tooth, so I would probably love it. We also, though, remember, and again, for our lovely Northern Hemisphere listeners, um, Christmas time, as we said the other day, it's really bloody hot. So it's now not, you've got a bit of a taste of it. It's not really what you'd call eggnog weather. <laughs> no, it's not. You, not know, really. you know what I feel like on this 45-degree Christmas day? Eggnog. Which no. is why it's great being pagan because you celebrate Yule at midwinter when it is actually cold. So you can do things like mulled wine and feasts like that that mean that it's cold when you're enjoying them. So to you atheists and stuff. Hey. <laughs> hey. Back off. Isn't that why, like, isn't Christmas in July an Australian thing? Just so people are like, oh, I want to have Christmas roast when it's actually cold. Yes, it's an Australian thing to do that. Plus, also for tourism to the Blue Mountains. That is the other reason. Yeah. Mm. Yep. So, Fair enough. so back in the pavilion, Dan. <laughs> now, Dan was this week just cutting out 
all pretense, <laughs> and wandering the, the pavilion with a spoon. <laughs> yeah. Um, and again, he even said at the start, you know, the faster you bake this, the faster I can eat it. Like, so I wonder if he's being fed. <laughs> I mean, I know he's—I know he's like you know an adult, but child protective services may need to be called because <laughs> just to make sure he's being looked after. Is there malnourishment happening? I don't think so. No. I think he's—he's he's quite. I think he's just on, like taking his hosting duties very seriously. He's clearly watched Mel Buttle, and he's like, yeah. "That's how you do it." <laughs> I'd like to—I'd like to think that it's a bit like a, a, a Miss America or a Miss World, where he's the first runner-up for judging. <laughs> <laughs> and, and if and, and if if the judge cannot fulfil their duties, he's there. He's ready to step in at any point in time. So he's just keeping the judging abilities. Yeah, you know, he's obviously watched a bit of Australian MasterChef with Gary with the spoon <laughs> and Matt with the just the walking around down. with their own spoon. Yeah. Although, as I said, do check out the gif. I retweeted it. Leah's gif, which is one of our favourites, of Mel and Claire with the the giant. And Giant doesn't even do the trifle justice. No, Chris's trifle. Yeah, trifle. Um, mm. Which. Tower of the, Trifle is the, what I think I called it. Is it is Tower of Trifle. I have seen, <laughs> trifle of Tower. I have seen the, um, the Trifle Bowl in person and you could fit a small child in it. Yes, you That's could. That's not a joke. Um, Newborn baby. And they, um, and they walked around with jumbo spoons that could get to the bottom of that. That is what Dan Levy needs to do next year. Yeah. Mm. Two um, girls, one trifle. Two girls, one trifle. It really mm. is. <laughs> um, Speaking of Chris, like I tweeted that gif yesterday and I didn't tag him in it. But he was obviously on Twitter because he liked it. And he's hardly ever on Twitter. Oh, like, now I, the Bake Off's over. I tagged him. Oh, okay. I tagged him in his trifle. Because whenever That'd I put that up, whenever I put that up, I want to give him a chance to gloat about it to the yeah, world. Yeah, fair enough. Because let's face it, any trifle Honestly. that big, you deserve to gloat to the world about it. Um, so I also like when, when James created, you know, his own baking terminology. Everyone else is using fancy terms. And he's like, <laughs> the sponge will be barky. <laughs> is that a thing, Barky? Is it now, is James. Now. <laughs> it really is now. Um, then there was James had a couple of moments in this one. Um, one of them was his lack of finesse when he, as he said, when he got to the judging, he didn't so much roll his sponge as fold it. Um, and when it was folded, <laughs> we saw the prolapse. Oh yeah. Before I think this particular sponge. Had a bit of um, IBS going uh, on. Upset stomach. It was an upset, upset stomach. stomach. Just um, had a few dodgy prawns the night before. But then there was one other moment for poor James. There was one other moment for poor James. Leah is just giving me a look. Leah is giving a look. shaking her head. This is what happens when you're in the studio. <laughs> yeah. um, so um, James also had one of my favorite. It was very subtle. You have to pause it to see it. Because obviously they worked it out, but the line that he said was too good. So James is doing a bit to camera, and they cut on into about three or four seconds, he'd obviously been eating strawberries or raspberries. <laughs> oh, I missed that both and times I saw it. he had, like, like the red from the raspberry or whatever it was on his lips and, like, on his chin. And it just looked like he was a vampire who had fed. I really hope he's a vampire that's just fed. Yeah, like... I'm surprised it's Canada's sparkling. a good climate for that. It is. No sparkling mm. in the sunlight. Well, most of, the, most of the vampire TV shows seem to get made in Toronto, so there you go. <laughs> I mean, that, that's also about tax cuts, but I'm going with it's all yeah. about the climate for them. Um, <laughs> or maybe he'd just been to an audition for one of those shows on the side while he was waiting for it to bake. Speaking of creepy elements, yes, this line was spoken inside the pavilion. <laughs> do, do you want to make pine cones? <laughs> <laughs> From Linda. No, like, Linda, of it all people. sexy, though. Because like, Dan was like, is there anything cones? I can do for you? And there was, do you... Do you want to make pine cones? And I didn't expect him to actually make them. I thought that was, I thought that was code for, is there something I can eat? Yes. <laughs> um, She's like, no, you need to earn your food today, James. <laughs> Dan. And I also think, right, that that's code at home. You know, she said, husband, she's like, do you want to make pine cones? He's like, I'll be up in the bedroom. Because so from the pine cone comes a tree. <laughs> and then grandchildren that she can make gingerbread houses for. Um, <laughs> there were a couple of really nice little finesse moves too. Vandana's little chocolate truffles. Superb, mm-hmm. and also as much as she looked at it and went, "Not my finest work." Terry's bird. Oh, oh yeah, that looks so cute. That was bloody brilliant. That was glorious. Did she get the mold? Did she make the mold? I don't know. Terry, tell us. <laughs> um, 
Now let's get to the judging. She now we bought it from the gift shop. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Yeah, we need to go and check out the Australia Zoo gift shop to see if they've got, like, bird moulds for chocolate. I went to Australia Zoo, or oh, I was 13, so my cousin would have been about three, and every time we saw a crocodile, he just pointed it and said, bigger one. <laughs> so they were all the biggest crocodiles. So as I've, as I've mentioned previously, my experience at Australia Zoo involved people giving me grief every time Bindi Irwin appeared. <laughs> and there's cutouts of Bindi everywhere yes. like she's literally everywhere and they just finished filming the Nickelodeon kid show she did so there's this big giant climbing wall with cutouts of Bindi Irwin all over it and it was ju- I was haunted by Bindi wherever I went it was Bindi Irwin. Don't, don't anyway sorry Bindi sorry Terry mom. sorry Terry don't want to bag out um, all right so let's go through James so James the chocolate orange roll um, mm-hmm. it was folded yes. not a spiral it was folded. He didn't temper the chocolate. He just melted it and then piped it. I know that's the Twix. I know. I just think the sponge tempered the other chocolate. I know. Um, I'm sorry. However, they said the texture was really moist and the flavour was really good. Yeah. So. Top job, James. Look, James's flavours have been good. And as we saw, this was kind of the end of him having no finesse. Mm-hmm. The rest of this episode, like, it was a different James. Yeah, definitely. And he sort of, you could tell he'd been practising his part. I mean, he did have to lose the extension on his house. But, <laughs> hey, whatever you need to do. Um, Linda with her pumpkin caramel roll. Um, the bark looked good. Mm-hmm. Um, and it looked amazing. But, yes. as was common with almost all of them, the ratio of filling the sponge, not quite, not right. quite there. And the, the spiral wasn't really a tight spiral. However, again... Flavours were excellent. Yep. yep. Um, Sabrina. Now, she did this little drizzle. As they were doing the countdown, she did the drizzle across the top. And you could just... It was the start of the judges sort of going, what is this crap? You're mm-hmm. better than this. Because like, mm-hmm. she did the little drizzle and they're like, why? Like, that's... For where you are in the competition, that seems pointless. But it's mm. Christmas. All the things... <laughs> <laughs> I like that's your answer to everything. <laughs> that would have been your answer on this on this episode all week. All you would have done is, but it's Christmas, all the things. <laughs> that's not enough to And the judges would have been like, no, it's summer. And you're like, yeah, exactly, it's Christmas. All, all the things. things. Like, oh. Start chucking cranberries at it and <laughs> holly. However. Dragging a reindeer. What Sabrina did get right they was... They could get real reindeer. Oh, no, that's a European thing, aren't yeah. they, reindeer? What they did get right, Just however... Just get a moose and pretend. Paint <laughs> some spots on the back. <laughs> a caribou. They this could is... get a caribou. Paint some spots on the back. Fine. <laughs> Not this, a bear. This is Inappropriate Stereotyping with Christy. No, it's like if we're talking about Australia and I was overseas, I'm like, just get a kangaroo and paint it, paint some spots on the back. And how accurate would that be? Perfect. It's got four legs. <laughs> is it six white boomers or 12 white boomers? Six, six white boomers. Six white boomers. No, white That's... boomers. Anyway, back <laughs> in the don't... pavilion. It's I... Australian Christmas Carol. I only know that first line. Back in the pavilion. I know it all. No, back in the pavilion. Um... <laughs> The spiral was I great. I wanted it brownies. <laughs> the spiral was actually great on Sabrina's, and so was the ratio of yeah. sponge to cream. Mm-hmm. Um, but the cream was grainy, yeah. um, mm. so that was a bit of a problem. Terry. Now they said the bird was spectacular. <laughs> that was kind of where the positives went. Um, after I liked that, her concept of it being a birch log, though. Yeah, that was cool. I love birch. Um, they said there was too much white chocolate, mm. which even Terry agreed with, and they said it was overly sweet. And my thought process on it being overly sweet was it's covered in white chocolate and it's full of candy cane. No duh. Mm. <laughs> right? White chocolate and candy cane, that's going to be overly sweet. Then we get to Vandana. Mm. Again, my favourite baker for a reason. The ratio is really good. The spiral was great. The flavour was wonderful. So pretty. And Bruno, his words, technically flawless. Yes. Aww. Right. Oh. That's a moment. Mm, it is. That's a moment. Mm. So that's like a little um, Maggie Beer mm, moment. You know, yes. she smiles and just looks away. Oh my god. Uh, okay, so a little private moment down there. To the technical. And before we start the technical <laughs> I'm ignoring that. Before we start the technical. Apologies mm. to all of our Jewish listeners for what's about to happen. <laughs> so, yes. 
What's the technical? Muzzle tough, everyone! Welcome to Hanukkah! It's Ruggala! Yes, we're having Ruggala today! It's Ruggala! So... Jewish croissant. It's wonderful, my love, isn't it? it? It's delightful. It's fantastic. Yeah, so it was made by Shiksa, but what can you do? So here we go. So look, this I'm even joining in. Shiksa, actually, more like a Meshuggah. Yeah, you're a Meshuggah. <laughs> um, <laughs> we may have an old Jewish couple that we do in voices. <laughs> Um, yeah. Just to each other um, hmm. on the phone normally, and we get I very. I feel weird like looks. I shouldn't be here. I feel like you should be here, and I feel like you. I feel like <laughs> the voice of reason. I, be here. I feel like that voice of reason should have its own Jewish slant. Anyway, <laughs> so when they said Rogola, the cut to, and this is becoming one of my favourite subtle things on the technical. Mm. They cut to Vandana, mm. who once again gave a shrug that was <laughs> everybody like. Oh, what the fuck's that? <laughs> Ruggala? Mm. Isn't that a sport, the rounded ball they play in? And that's rugby. Sorry. <laughs> Close. Isn't that that show with the babies that talk? Oh, that's and... Rugrats. Oh, that's Rugrats. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Rug... Cot King. Yes, the Cot King. Isn't that so... a jar of tomato sauce you can buy at the... Oh, that's no, Rugaletto. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it was the shrugging and everyone's like, never heard of it, except for Terry. But Terry didn't fill anyone with confidence when she said, I think I know just enough to know that I'm screwed. <laughs> <laughs> She's a wise woman. She's a very wise She's woman. She's a yentl. Now you had to yenta. make... <laughs> She's a yentl. Sorry. <laughs> Not a yenta. She's a yentl. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, she's Barbara Streisand. People. <laughs> no. No. People who need people. Papa, can you hear me? Would have been better. Papa but anyway. Can you hear me? Oh, no. Why did I do that? <laughs> anyway, moving on. Moving on. Before we get the full performance. Um, and by the way, yes, I know there are people out there that are determined. No, don't even ever joke. <laughs> Memory from cats. Don't even joke. There have oh, been people out there, by the way, who have requested an all-musical <laughs> episode of The Washing well, Up. There are people. One person. <laughs> it's going to happen now. It was a Brandon no, no, Josh. Other, no, 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 no. No, no, no. Because <laughs> other people have now liked that suggestion. Uh, it might happen. It might happen. So we'll just we'll just take the microphone to karaoke. So what was <laughs> so so what was really I think drunk? Christy needs to make a comeback for it. <laughs> so what was interesting about this? They had to make two different types. They had to make an apricot one, and they had to make a chocolate. one. Scott Van D has yes, requested the musical. He has, uh, and so that's probably going to happen. Hey, Scott, yeah. that's probably happening. Your fault. Um, <laughs> completely your fault. Um, now, Bruno gave the ingredients for the filling. But then gave them zero quantities, um, <laughs> like for, for anything. Just said, mix chocolate, this, 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 this. No quantities for mm. either filling. Just work it out yourself. And the baking time was, and it bake until golden good. brown. Yeah. <laughs> now, the problem with that was, as they said, they needed a good half an hour in, in the oven. Nobody knew they needed a good half an hour in the oven. <laughs> People were also being bake off, and they were both being bake off. What I mean by that is checking their oven every two and a half oh. seconds, which of course lowers your temperature. Oh no 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 no! James is the best doing a Selassie, just resting up against the baking door. Oh no, who was it? Was it Robert as well that had that, that yeah. pose? Yeah, just um, leaning up against the door. Mm, yeah. So I loved that um, they were all trying to work out how to fold them and, and what to do with them, and James. Bumped into the right answer, yeah. Completely accidentally, like every they all cut them into try and they're trying to work out what to do. And James is just looking at it and he goes, "I wonder if it's a bit like a croissant." He also said, "I've either made rugula or some new kind of delicious treat." Yes, <laughs> like he had no idea if it was right. <laughs> but that's that's what this challenge was. It was a technical, which was I don't know if this is right. Mm. Yeah, we'll see. But um, his instincts were bang on. Oh so. no, he got it. He got it spot on. Yeah. Um, I love that Terry worked out with half an hour to go. She knew she was late, um, and I love when they tell her anything you need. She goes, "Can we go back in time?" <laughs> <laughs> and Julia's yeah. like, "I'll just go ask." <laughs> <laughs> just push back the clock. Add an extra half hour. Yeah, and Linda. Well. <laughs> Linda by this point knew that, in her words, we need a miracle. Um, and then we came to something that I think we all like to see. Mm. Dan Levy mm. has proposed mm. the Rugula channel. Yes. All Rugula all the time. Um, Foxtel channel 932. Yes, Rugula! <laughs> so, yeah, but it's like the Wonka 
TV it's channel like where you get to <laughs> touch it and then you get to eat rule of that as well. Have yeah. you ever made it Netflix? He made the oscillating fan. Maybe I can ask him to make the yes, channel. Yes, yes. So, so if you've ever found oscillating fan um, on Netflix, mm. Christian is the person that made that. And I'll give you a bit of uh, inside um, goss. Inside goss. They had to chuck the fan. Oscillating fan was on the street. You could have picked up oscillating fan, had yourself a famous fan. Didn't work though. Could have had a famous <laughs> fan. <laughs> could have had a famous fan. See this fan? This fan's <laughs> been on fan. Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> this fan's had its own Netflix special. <laughs> so, but but I like the idea of Dan p- pitching the Rogala channel. Um, yeah. He'd be a good host. He would be. Welcome to Rogala. <laughs> All Rogala. All, All the, the time. time. Um, today... Apricot. Um, <laughs> so the judging. Now, this was interesting judging because nobody got it right, mm. right? It wasn't that, um, like, some somebody got it right. Everyone sort of got it wrong. Mm. And what I mean they got it wrong was they were basically all underbaked. Yeah. Every mm. single one of them were underbaked. Like, no one got the baking right. So Vandana's, um, they said it was a little raw. The egg wash didn't quite work. And the chocolate ones were, in particular, quite raw. Mm. Um, Sabrina's were lacking consistency Too much filling in the apricot If you saw before she folded them She put the apricot right out to the very edge So it was completely covered Mm. Um, They said that they were both underbaked again Um, What I liked about Sabrina though Was she didn't have a clue But she approached it as if she was an old pro And knew exactly what she was doing (laughs) And I liked that She was just Yeah, went in doubt Faked the confidence Mm. Um, James They said they were particular not the first time they said one of James's bakes has been petite. Um, they said there was some good shape. Hey, mm-hmm. he's just making up for his um, pedophores. <laughs> Which were huge. Well, petite. <laughs> no, 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 no. They weren't petite. They were petite because they were huge. Um, good shape, but again, underbaked. But they said the chocolate flavour was good. And, and I believe Rochelle's line was almost store-bought. Mm. And like... I was like, is that a compliment or an insult? I couldn't tell. <laughs> I think it was a compliment. Um, I think, but I feel like on British Bake Off that would have been. Oh, like British Bake Off! On British Bake Off, it would have been a huge insult. A beautiful yeah. British insult. Oh, these are so wonderful. They could be store bought. Looks like you would have bought these in Waitrose. Yes. <laughs> is this coming a Tesco bag? <laughs> <laughs> Where she could have, she could have said something like, "Oh, I feel like I'm in New York at a yeah. Jewish bakery or something." Is 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 Richard Hammond selling these at Morrison's? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but he could be. It's like this bitch slap back to the Stone Age. <laughs> Terry, unfortunately, she had a poor egg wash. The filling was the wrong ratio, and both of them were cooked under. Mm, so yeah. again, problem. Linda's were quite puffy. <laughs> I loved that description. These are quite puffy. And then it was, <laughs> but unfortunately, being quite puffy means that's a sign that you've overworked the dough. Yeah. Um, so, in the Ruggalo ratings, mm. so the Ruggalo ratings, um, mm. you've got fifth was Terry, unfortunately. Linda was fourth. They were too puffy. Yes. Third was Sabrina. Second was Vandana. And first was James. And when they went, so James, you've seen these before? And he goes, never heard of them until this morning. Muzzle tough. Muzzle tough, James. Muzzle tough to Me, you. Be your first child. Be a manly Thank child. <laughs> All right. And with that, we need to get on to the showstopper. And the showstopper is quintessentially Bake Off. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Gingerbread. Yay. You know what I would have done? I would have done a haunted house because I'm like, it's holiday baking. We could have done some in like Halloween as one of the themes. If it had fallen apart, no one would have noticed. No. It could have been part of the theme. I was like, it's just so haunted. Like if this is polter- the poltergeist house at the end of the movie. <laughs> 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 All you needed to do then was what happened to James's first set of walls. Just leave them, <laughs> leave them in the oven for a little bit too long and bring them out. And we're done. <laughs> <laughs> that would have worked. What would you have made? Gingerbread. I don't know. Like, my joke answer is an outhouse. Would it have been, ah, yes. That would have been good, actually. Would it have been the bell tower? Would you have made the bell tower? <laughs> That's an Australian bake-off joke. Only Australian bake-off people will get that. We love you, James. Um, we love you, James. Um, that's, that's Australian bake-off, James. We um, love you too, Canadian bake-off, James. Does anyone in your family make gingerbread houses? 
No, my sister-in-law makes very good gingerbread, but mm. just in like regular biscuit shapes. Yeah, no, my family does. And a bit of a shout out to, to Tegan Higginbotham, who of course once famously attempted her her gingerbread house around Christmas time. Yeah, it eventually, eventually worked, but it was a very long process. My mum made what, got one of those charity. You know when you support a school and they send out like the charity the kind kids. of kits, like the gingerbread kits. So she made one of those with my niece. That's probably about. Close. Yeah, I think my cousins have done the kits. We just bought one one year. I've heard it's a thing where you can actually go to a night as a mum if you've got kids at the school as a fundraising thing and get boozy and bake. And well, make you know who does? You know who does make your own gingerbread house nights? Who? Monica Carvalho. She does. Moorish she? cakes. Yeah. Moorish cakes. Remember, Moorish cakes on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook. Like, and that's not me just segueing that in. That's true. She yeah. does every Christmas. She does a make your own gingerbread yeah. house thing, and you can buy them as well on her um, online shop. Her they're incredible. Yeah. Oh, they're incredible. So yeah, go and go and check those out. I might even see if Monica can um, tweet out a photo for you all. Yeah. Um, but she makes some amazing ones, and yeah, runs the classes to to go off and make them. Mm. So you can do a class with Monica. So you can do a, a class with a Bake Off runner up on how to actually make a gingerbread house. Yeah, that's really cool. If you move to Miscellaneous Australia, if you city. move to Miscellaneous <laughs> City. However, I am not brave enough because I have the finesse of a James. Except in this challenge, um, in this challenge, James had finesse. Yes. So let's just start with James because I want to start talking about the concept. James decided to go. Oh my god, they found me! So there's a siren, <laughs> siren in the background. Um, there are always sirens. Here. Miscellaneous city is a rough city. Um, so James's concept of an eco-friendly gingerbread house. Oh my god, it was amazing! <laughs> what a concept! And I, was... I love when he put the first line. In, it burnt, and his response was. Well, we all need to downsize as part of our eco work, and you know, I, we only need to focus on the main house. We don't need that extension. I just like to see a hipster elf move in, <laughs> <laughs> like, like a bearded elf, you know, vegan. wearing all retro, vegan, ironically vegan. And you know he's vegan. Yes, he'll tell you he's vegan. <laughs> um, so, and his androgynous partner. And, he, <laughs> and his androgynous also, partner. Also, he had a little planter boxes in the worm farms. So I was like, oh, it could be my sister and sister-in-law's house. <laughs> Although the funniest part was, again, and, and Bruno pointed this out in the judging, everything is brilliantly to scale, except those worms. Those <laughs> worms were huge. And those worms were the equivalent of when I have to draw, like, a person and a house. Um <laughs> Oh, it's, yeah, like when you're drawing in, like, primary school. Yeah, when, or, or me today. I draw a house. <laughs> I just don't draw. I draw a house. Easy I draw result. a person. The person is three times bigger than the house. They can't get in. <laughs> right? And it's not like they go, oh, perspective. And I'm like, no, it's just, it's just oversized. They can't get into the house. <laughs> um, but the idea of installing actual solar panels. Yes. yes. To run the lighting and running lighting off a solar panel. And then he turned around at one point and goes, as you can see, my installation work is excellent, so feel free to hire me. For I'm, su- I'm surprised he didn't do the, you know, the reed um, water filtration system. <laughs> <laughs> he's, hay- got re- he's got renewable hot and cold water. Yeah, hay bale outhouse. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a cistern under the a septic tank under him <laughs> so he can do his own water. Yes. Chemical water. Needed oh. some more time for that one. He did need a water tank next year. Yeah, to it. a water tank. Um, could have done with a water tank. Um, that would have been cool. Maybe yeah. they don't have like as much drought in Canada as we do here. I've never heard Canada being in drought. Like in the mid two thousands, like I think is when most houses in Victoria just Same. everyone has a water tank. In the in the two th- in the two thousands in Australia, the drought got so bad. I was in Queensland at one point. I believe they were on um, level twelve. Water restrictions, yeah. which is crying, is illegal and can get you punished. <laughs> you basically four have to years. pay a dollar to pee. Yeah, if you, it, it is, it is the plot of the musical <laughs> you're in town. So, um, we'll talk about Vandana next, right? Yes. Now, Vandana decided that she was going to make a treehouse for her son. As she said, my son's always wanted a treehouse in the backyard, um, and I can't work out how to do that. So, <laughs> I've decided to make this treehouse for him, and I can only say, Vandana. I'm sure he was bitterly disappointed mm. because he's like, where's my real treehouse? Can I have the treehouse? Can I have an actual treehouse? Here's the treehouse. Look, I made it for you. Can Mom, I just say, what's this? What's wrong with the kids today? Back in my day when you watched a movie, there was a, um, a beautiful montage of kids just 
you know, taking out their little red wagon and filling it up with all bits and pieces from the neighbourhood and building their own treehouse. And then getting arrested for theft off a construction (laughs) site. (laughs) I love, um, have you seen You're the Worst? No. No, one of the characters, Jimmy, is like obsessed with treehouse building reality TV shows. (laughs) <laughs> it's pretty great. It's reality there are TV. reality TV shows around building treehouses. Wow. They do exist. Oh, my God. So, so she decided to make this treehouse for her son in gingerbread form. And, again, it would have looked cool and cute. But, again, he's probably deep down going, I'd rather a real treehouse. <laughs> he probably wasn't watching. Mm. No, I mean. He's three. Yeah, but it's, it, eventually he's going to look back at it. Mm. Like, you can imagine, that comes out at the 21st. Just Remember that time your mother made you a treehouse in gingerbread on television that you didn't get to eat? No, 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 Remember just, that time? Just trick him, right? Put down a few milk crates on top, <laughs> set up a tent, and then put some, like, shrubs around the side. <laughs> <laughs> Mummy's built you a treehouse. A low, a low rent treehouse <laughs> with milk crates. I love it. He's three. It might He's work. Three. It might Seven, work. No. It might I work. Mean, now, you, you, angle long. Your, you angle your phone so it looks like you're looking up at him. Put a few, put a few like, <laughs> dead branches around. Perspective tricks. So when he looks back, you go, no, no. You just gaslight the shit out of him. Look, I made you a beautiful treehouse. <laughs> <laughs> what, what you break his arm with the full effect of falling out of it? <laughs> yes. Like... You know, well, why did you break my arm up? I didn't. You fell out of the treehouse. <laughs> you <laughs> fell. There's like um, surveillance footage. <laughs> <laughs> so, Linda, let's move on. Because Linda, on the other hand, makes gingerbread houses all of the goddamn time. And it shows. Um, as she said, she makes as all of... As often as Terry makes donuts. Yes, mm-hmm. apparently. So, Linda makes wow. all of her grandchildren gingerbread houses... Um, and, and I loved the little sideshow that took place between Linda and James. Yes. It was happening all day, mm-hmm. like all the way through. Like Linda was the one James was joking around about the fact that he forgot his butter. Um, <laughs> and then later on there was this cool little sideshow where Linda was talking about kneading her gingerbread, but she wasn't quite sure why she did it. And she goes, James, do you need your gingerbread? And he turned around and he goes, I do, Linda, but like you, I don't know why I do it. <laughs> I just do it. <laughs> It's a thing I do. We just need it. We just need it. Why do you need it? I don't know. You need it. Why do you need, need it? need it for this challenge. So. I love the icicles on ginger. On oh, ginger's, oh, ginger's, ginger's cake. <laughs> Here we go. She's been so good with names. I know. And she said Julia and I was like, is that right? It is. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, and see, now I'm convinced that her name's Emma. What's happening? <laughs> Look, I'm here for the I'm here for the correct names. Although Raheem will never die. Uh, thank you, by the way, Bruno, for retweeting the other day. It was really appreciated. I hope you listened to the episode where Christy called you Raheem. <laughs> it was just my brain. So being awesome. But but said so James and Linda. <laughs> James and Linda have their own little sideshow going, which was really cool. Yeah. Um, we also had Sabrina. With her Rockefeller Centre. Yeah, so Sabrina decided to make 30 Rock. Um, <laughs> there was no Tina Fey. Um, there was no Alec Baldwin. Um, no Kevin the Page. There was also no back window. Um, it was only the front and the sides. She <laughs> didn't bother to do anything to the back of the building at all. It was just completely blank. But um, it, I thought it looked spectacular. It looked spectacular and the size was huge, but she didn't do... The back of it, and it's kind of, especially when you get to this point of the competition, mm. she kind of it did, it did feel, and we'll get to when we get to the judging. But the judges felt clearly that she was cruising, yeah. Um, which you can sort of. But the other thing is, I think, like normally, biscuit week is like in the very early starts of the competition. So you're making a biscuit structure in the first two weeks. If you leave it to week six, like you get much more impressive things, yeah. As well, absolutely. And the structure that she built was incredible. Mm. Um, all right, now. Terry. So Terry decided to make her dream home. Now... I'm so sure she's trolling us. Now, (laughs) Terry's dream home, I'll just explain what it was. Terry's dream home was a house, which was like an old converted barn, with an animal sanctuary. (laughs) Terry, you say? Terry. Now, if only Terry could live in a house... With an animal sanctuary attached where maybe they could get the public to come and look at the animals. I'm fairly they're... sure there's a movie about it called We Bought a Zoo. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's an entire TV series about it called The Crocodile Hunter. And 
I was not on board with Christie's theory originally. I am 100% on board with this theory <laughs> yeah. now. Yep, it's all falling into place. It is it? all falling into place. I was waiting for her to say, you know, I want this animal sanctuary so my oldest daughter can go out there and mm. she can take the lead on running Dancing this, with the Stars. Winning Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> and Instagram dating some boy from America and the press can, like, talk about it. Meanwhile, I'll be faux dating Russell Crowe. <laughs> You know, well, you don't want to really date Russell Crowe. Nobody, really That's fair enough. Nobody really wants to date Russell Crowe. Um, I do encourage Terry, though. I tweeted her on Facebook. Oh, not Facebook. Twitter. I tweeted her. <laughs> Twitter. I'm just renaming Twitter to Facebook. Oh. You know, I really like doing Snapchats on Instagram. Um, Snap faces. So, Snap faces. Um, uh. So I tweeted out, um, there's a video. My friend's dad is looking for a buyer for his um, dog and cattery um, up in Gunnada. Good old... Canada. It's about six hours from miscellaneous Australian <laughs> city. Um, yeah, Terry, make your dreams come true. Have a move to Australia because, you know, you don't already live here. Um, you don't really live in the <laughs> Great wink, North. Wink, nudge, nudge. Yeah, yeah we, we get it, Terry. You don't really live there. And there's five acres and you can set up your, your, your wildlife rescue. It might be less moose and more... Um, more kangaroos. The other thing, though, about Terry... A lot of kangaroos. The other thing kangaroos. about Terry is, though, is... Less let's, beavers, more wombats. Let's just pretend that the theory, yeah. though, is wrong. The other option with Terry building her dream home out of gingerbread is to send a very subtle message to her husband. Which is? This is what you're buying, you bastard. <laughs> I want this house. I this thought, one. I thought you meant she, she like... She I thought like we were bills. still on Steve Irwin, so yeah. I was just... <laughs> oh, no, you can't send him a subtle message. <laughs> we can Not anymore. Um, no... Oh I my. thought you meant that she her actual house would be made out of gingerbread, and I'm like, what is she like going for? Like the, the like is it going to be in the middle of a forest? Are there going to be children that she attracts and eats? Like oh. that just doesn't well, she makes terrible. donuts a lot. It's got that. dark. I know you went dark. dark. You went dark. I went. I went. She As wants, I said, I was missing a Halloween challenge. I went. She wants a new house. You went. She wants to eat the forest children. <laughs> um... <laughs> Well, the children you know of the what? forest created the White Walkers. You know what? I think, they have a lot to answer for. I think we need to all agree and settle on. <laughs> I think we all need to agree and settle simply on. She's Terry Irwin. Anyway, <laughs> um, so Linda decided that she was going to make some stained glass. Yeah. Uh, which looked really cool, except for the fact that you know she had to then get the stained glass off the baking paper, which was a bit of a, a bit of a trip. Difficult. Um, then we got the structure building. The structure building is always my oh, favourite, except yes. there wasn't a lot of collapsing because they... Because it's the okay. top five. But the other thing was there wasn't a lot of collapsing because unlike the last time we saw this in the Great British Bake Off, these bakers seem to know what they're doing. Yeah. Mm. Um, the structures were so much more impressive than what was seen in the British Bake Off, and that's not to denigrate those British bakers at all. But, as we said, this is a top group of bakers. Mm. So we're dealing with some very skilled, you know, bakers who have been through a lot already. But then there is also a culture of being able to go on Instagram and seeing what other people are doing. And but, but for example, for example, Candace's Pub, which was the oh. outstanding one. Yeah. I don't think it would have come close. In this particular In one. this one. Because if you look at the quality of all five mm. of those. I mean, like, and... Vendana was like she had a crack in the tree, but she was just like, oh, I'll just fix it, and she, she had a crack it. in the crack in the crack in the base and fixed the crack in the base. Yeah. Um, and there are a couple of others like Linda had her shingle start to fall apart, but she just glued them all back together mm. and kept on going with it. And it she's like impressive. fingerprints. I don't need these. <laughs> yes. What are fingerprints? So if there was a I major, haven't... if there was a major crime committed in <laughs> that area of Canada during the filming. Some Linda unit. is possibly the person who did it because she had no fingerprints left. They've obviously used their hands, but there's no fingerprints. Any, like, you know, residue from gloves, like fibres and stuff? No, no fibres. Just this little bit of gingerbread so it's, crumb. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say it's Linda or a professional swimmer. I'm going <laughs> the, ging the, the gingerbread crumbs you give away. Yeah, um, true. Now, I love James losing the piping tip too. I couldn't find the tip of his piping bag. And I was like, where is it? I don't know how you could have lost it, James, in all of this. Like, and I like the idea that it just probably turned up on someone else's bench because he put it there for safekeeping. That would have been I fun. I am just astounded at James's skill from those instructions that are hurriedly, you know, like drawn mm. together. And the accuracy. Who wrote these instructions? Oh, oh. it was me. <laughs> <laughs> Who's 
stupid idea was this? <laughs> so, and then the other thing that we really learned a lot about was we learned a bit more about Linda. It's the most flustered we've seen Linda in the mm. whole series. Mm. Um, and we knew she was flustered because she kept on saying fudge. Yeah. Um, it's so Canadian. Oh, fudge. <laughs> it's so just... I know, it's so, all this fudge. She's going to have to go to confession. Oh, how's she going to manage that? Um, <laughs> and I also loved at the end, and, and when we got to the judging, it became really funny, was Linda was complaining about the quality of her gingerbread structure mm. at the very end of the, like, when you saw it, you're like, why? That's amazing. Yeah. But what I really loved about that was it was the, she was complaining about the quality of her gingerbread structure and Which saying it's not very good. Which had working lights on it. Meanwhile. And a tree <laughs> inside. Yes. Meanwhile, the person she's talking to, is Sabrina. Eating a candy cane. <laughs> yeah, that's right. She's, oh, that's Sabrina, right. <laughs> double fisting a candy cane. She's got one in each hand. Yeah, and she's like, and then she turns and looks like, ooh. <laughs> like this weird look with this candy See, cane. See, she, miss, she missed Jude too, so she had to do a Jude. <laughs> Everyone's had to do a Jude. All right, so the judging. Um, Vendana, uh, I, that thing was glorious. Um, there are a couple of things that were really important. Um, they were speechless with the amount of the attention to detail, like the little details. I mean, um, Rochelle kept on going back to the strawberry patch, which looked yes, incredible. Yes, that was so cute. Um, it was the small details. Little it was the ball. Yep, there were all of those, it. all of those elements to it. The ponds, which she made out of the, she made out of the candy the and did as a glass pit. sandy mm. the sand pit. Um, Bruno also pointed out that. She made the structure up top, and most people, as you said, would have gone with a really thick, heavy base mm. to mm. hold it up. Instead, she went with a really dainty base mm. yeah. to match the structure, and it worked, and yeah. it looked spectacular. And her piping. Oh, oh, so good. And imagine having to do that in such a way that, like, you've got these little structures inside there, and everything you're placing, you can't screw up the piping. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, yeah, beautifully done. Now, Terry, I loved the comment that the windows made this one a fixer-upper. <laughs> <laughs> it's rustic. It's rusticated. Um, she, look, she probably could have got homes on homes in. Um, and home, it would have been, it would have been, um, it would have been homes to the rescue. Yes. That one. It wasn't homes on homes. It would have been homes to the rescue coming in and fixing up the shoddy shingle work as well on the roof. Um, Bruno argued that she overdid the decoration in particular, the, the overdid the sprinkles on it's the roof. It's Christmas, Bruno! <laughs> I, think, I think the sprinkles were fine. Have some freckle tiles. Yeah. But I think it's just the piping, there was too there was much a lot icing. Of piping. She could have used a narrower... I don't know thing. what was... I, I, again, Terry, please, what inspired the overabundance of icing this week? Because I mean, the, like the first the first challenge I would had... Eat it. Oh, no, I needed a hard No, bit, I know but... what happened. Yeah. Her, basically, she had to get back to um, Australia Zoo for the um, annual like board meeting or something. And went, I have to throw this. <laughs> I have to throw the challenge. <laughs> I have to throw the challenge. I can't um... trust Bindi not to do a hostile takeover <laughs> if I'm not there. Yeah, you've got to watch out for Bindi. <laughs> watch out for Bindi. She's a menace. Um, <laughs> gingerbread spice, however, mm. was excellent. I said yeah. her gingerbread was incredible. It was mm. just the over decoration. I love gingerbread now. I know, I know, and we've sort of got the weather that we can do it. Yes, we do. Um, and very humid though. Yes, but that's that's by your standards. Although we've got stuff left yeah. over. We Melbourne today, is very dry. Today we went to there was a drought relief um, pop up done by Huda and the two flaming Arabs. Is it no two smoking Sweet. Arab Arabs? <laughs> <laughs> two two flaming arrows that are just quite spectacular. But two smoking arrows. Was there arrows. a gin? <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, and she did the dessert, so they did an awesome big um, smokehouse. Unfortunately, we didn't have any of the savoury because we'd just come from Yamcha. Oh dumplings were eaten. Um, many dumplings were eaten. Many, many dumplings were eaten. Um, but And mango pancakes. But we decided <laughs> we needed a second dessert, so we popped along and picked up some ladies' fingers from Huda. With a banana filling, what else is there? Banana filling, a couple other fillings. I don't know, they're going to be delicious. And her muffins. And her muffins. Turmeric muffin? Turmeric muffin, which I can't wait to have. Yeah. And it looks, it looks really good. Banana muffin. Um, you go follow both of those on, on Instagram. It said the two, two, um, the two flame arrows. <laughs> what are they called? The two flame arrows. <laughs> two smoking arrows. Um, it's your fault. <laughs> It's a, it's a uh, what's it called, a hundred and one Arabian <laughs> night. If you go to our Instagram at the washing at, at washing up pod, you'll find all of this on there. Um, <laughs> to continue, James, 
A phrase that I don't know we ever thought we'd hear. Mm. Technically impressive. <laughs> um, they were amazed and delighted by his glass, the straight, clear edges of the structure. Oh. The piping, they said it was clear you've worked mm. on your piping. And was able to hold up little solar panels. Um, they said they had a great snap to the gingerbread. The heat was really nice coming off it as well. Mm. And as Bruno said, it told a really amazing story yeah. about renewable energy. And, and it was like, you know, it wasn't flashy, but it was impressive and it was true to its concept. I really loved it. And it looked great. It looked yeah. spectacular. And, like, it didn't need to be overworked because... It looked simple, but because of the clean lines, there was nowhere to hide. If, yeah. if any of those lines were out of place... It, it would have been a grand like designs it. house. Yes. Yeah. Dude, I was waiting for... Um, the Kevin MacLeod would have spent better. would have spent like four years watching him build this thing and out went four million over do budget. Do do but the lesson do that do it tells do us about do eco... Do. <laughs> the dream and the passion for conservation... The, new, the baking. The baking. Do, 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 the use of ginger do, do, do. in such a natural, <laughs> seamless Ginger way. in a natural environment. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> so, Sabrina. Is this the future of houses. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not because it's edible. <laughs> Sabrina, the jumbo scale was interesting, but they said the judge's comment to her was that um, it ate. Beautifully. Like, Bruno's nodding when he was eating it. it was just hilarious. Mm. Like, he's nodding. And Sabrina's looking worried. He's like, it's brilliant. It's <laughs> brilliant. Like, but as they said, what they got concerned about was she wasn't pushing herself technique-wise. And she didn't push herself in terms of the decoration. It was fairly... I liked the M&Ms on the Christmas tree. I presume they're M&Ms. I, thought they were... I don't think they have Smarties in, in no. Canada. I thought were... that that was pretty Ooh, good. Reese's but the, the side of the building was... It was pretty bland in comparison to what everyone else did. I would have fucking eaten it. I would have eaten it. I'm not saying it was bad, but I'm saying compared to everyone else design-wise, it wasn't quite what the others were. She's just going for a big structure. I'm going to make it big. That's what they said. What happened at the back here? Was there a problem? And she went, no, no, I just decided not to do it. That's why you had spare time. And that's what Rochelle's looking at her going, what, you left the back of the building blank? Yeah. No, you've got to, you've got to do all of it. Um, I think the judges just wanted to give Sabrina a bit of a kick. Yep. Um, yeah. And you see that occasionally from time to time in Bake Off where someone's doing really well and they're just like, we need to give them a bit of a wake-up call and make them do something. Mm. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Linda, mm. the paving, the lighting, the shingles, the fact that Linda did a whole pile of things she's never done before. And then Rochelle going master chef and making her cry. Making her cry. That was just unnecessary. But, but gorgeous because I cried too. <laughs> but it was incredible. And they said the flavour was superb. Um, mm. Just excellent flavour. Linda was clearly emotional about it because, yeah. she, as she said, you know, this is I'm, I'm pushing myself to be better all the time. Yeah, yeah. Because Rochelle asked, "Have you done this? What was it? Something that she did before?" And she's like, "No, I've never done that." Yeah. Mm. And yeah. again, so she's still. And again, I think that too as well goes back to Sabrina mm. and the whole. You know, this is why you've got to push yourself. Look at Linda; she's yeah. pushing herself. And she's got to watch out now because she's got how many grandchildren they're all going to want stained glass windows and shingles on them now <laughs> yeah the problem Linda is you've, flashing lights the, the yeah. problem Linda is you've now Linda's now set the benchmark and <laughs> and she has this one child that goes I want one like James's I want it to be all renewable I want eco <laughs> I want eco I want a house. tree house <laughs> <laughs> And then you just one little kid. I want the biggest one you can make. Make me 30 rock. <laughs> <laughs> so the judging, it, look, it was a tough call. Two scale. It was a tough call. I think <laughs> Vandana for Star Baker, I was, again, obviously I'm going to be happy with that because yeah. she's my favourite baker. It could quite easily have been James and it could quite easily have been Linda. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was really, it was close. really close. But I think Vida I think um, Bandana was the right call. Yeah. Terry, unfortunately, was the right call. Yeah. Mm. And we hate this because we love you, Terry. You know this. Mm. We think you're magnificent. Yeah. I did I'm... cry at when I oh it's just I'm emotional. Sure. I am yeah. attempt I am attempting I did not cry as much as Sabrina did. I, I am att I hope you're okay, Sabrina. <laughs> Sabrina <laughs> didn't look okay. Like she grabbed Terry in like a bear hug from yeah. behind. It was like it's okay, it's okay, guys, and she's just like locked in. <laughs> I'm not letting you go. They can't take you if I won't let go. Do you um, think Sabrina has 
like kidnapped Terry and she's like being locked in <laughs> well, a proving drawer. One, one of you said like after the showstopper, it was like, you can't send anyone home. It's yeah. just not fair. <laughs> It's so good. But, so, no, but I said, we, we absolutely love you, Terry. You've been a, a delight to watch. And, and hopefully... You can get you on the pod. Hopefully in the next week we might have some news on that. And so. hopefully you'll just go and purchase my friend's dad's dog, dog and cat kennel up in Gunnada. I thought and you said it wasn't for sale anymore. I didn't think so. And then I looked and it's still for sale, but it's like by expressions of interest. So it's, oh, okay. Yeah, very like low key. Oh, so does that just mean you can walk in and go, I'm interested and he gives it to you? I'll ask Ross. I'll ask him. I don't want to move to Canada. I don't want to look after dogs. I like, I'll, look, I'll make it a cattery. I like Miscellaneous City. <laughs> can split it with Mel Buttle. She can do the dog side. <laughs> I'll do the cat side. I'm a fan of Miscellaneous City. Yes. So, um... <laughs> So I that's. So I don't know if they have yum cha in Gunnada. No, no, no. Miscellaneous City, however, does. Um, <laughs> so that, ladies and gentlemen, mm. has been, you know, basically, it's 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 a it's a very festive week. Yes, it's yes. a very festive week. It's a celebration week. It's a holiday week. It's a wonderful week. We wish you a merry bake off. We wish you a merry bake off. We wish you a merry bake off and a Canada's baking show. <laughs> Making a song. She's gonna work on the lyrics. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Leah, for coming in. As, as Chrissy sings you off with Harvey <laughs> Nagila, nothing, nothing is as appropriate or inappropriate. Um, Thank you un- for all the food <laughs> we'll do that you have bought me this week. We'll There's been a lot of it. So, so on behalf of Leah, and I don't know if she's going to stop or find out, I'm still Chris. <laughs> and I'm still Christy. And we will catch you all for the semi-final. Happy holidays. Bye.